Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Today, I just wanted to take a quick look at this Corsair water block. If you guys have been looking at the news in the last few months, a lot of YouTubers have kind of shown that there is a potential for these to leak if you press it a certain way. Now, I've actually had this system built for months and months, and I never had any problem at all during normal usage. But at the same time, I really wasn't, you know, pushing things around and pulling at it. Um, as you can see, I did a, a soft tube build and I actually did this build right around the time the Corsair stuff started to come out. Um, just because I really wanted to see how it compared to things from like EK and Bits Power. Um, and as a summary of that experience, I did like some of it. Some of it I didn't like as much. My general opinion on both the CPU block as well as the GPU block was that the construction definitely wasn't up to par with like EK water blocks or even bits power that generally do feel like they're constructed a lot better. I mean, these companies definitely have been doing water cooling for a very, very long time. Um, and a few other reviewers pointed out as well that this GPU block did feel like maybe there's a little bit too much plastic, but it did look pretty cool at the time. It has that little flow meter there. Um, and I have this on a 2080 super and I actually did have a, an EK water block on this as well on the same card before and I did get better performance on the EK water block now the difference wasn't massive but it definitely was a couple of degrees if I recall maybe two or three degree difference as you guys know in water cooling that could be a pretty substantial difference especially when you're putting all your money into radiators and things like that so if a component is going to give you a nice savings of a two or three degree difference definitely something to think about. Um, I kind of found the same thing out about the CPU block. In general, the EK velocity block and even some of the bits power blocks would give me better performance by a few degrees. Um, I did try it with a couple of different CPUs. On this, I actually have it on an AMD system. This is a 3800X. Doesn't run particularly hot or anything like that, but it's still an 8-core, 16-thread CPU. You know, it clocks fairly nicely, and the performance is definitely acceptable with the Corsair blocks but once again the performance and the build quality I definitely prefer on the EK side. Now let's talk about this issue that different YouTubers have been having with this particular block. Basically when they push and pull at it in certain ways they get water leaking. Now I've had this build like I said for a couple of months and I have not had any issues at all with you know with the flow rate or, or with it leaking um, or any performance issues that would be tied to that but I also wasn't really touching it too much you know the glass stays on most of the time so I decided to try and replicate the issue that different YouTubers have experienced just to see if it's something that was also going to be happening to me. So first I decided let's try to do this with the system off. So as you can see, the system's off. I push and pulled in many directions and I'm putting a pretty decent amount of force. As you can see, the GPU is definitely moving around. Um, I'm putting a pretty decent amount of force. I'm kind of pulling at it from the tubes, from the little plastic connection. So with the system off, doesn't seem like I'm getting any type of leak. Um, when I did pull it once, I did hear something that was similar to like air rushing. So maybe it did open something up, but no liquid came out. So I think the next step, I'm gonna have to turn the system on and carefully kind of prod it around and see what happens. Generally, you never wanna have a running system with anything that has the potential to leak, but I'm just gonna put slight pressure on this and I'll kind of stop it. Um, there's a shroud underneath, so everything should be pretty protected. And as you can see, when the system is on, I kind of pull that top part a little bit. I'm not even putting on too much force and it definitely leaks. I got a pretty nice size drop or even two drops coming out of that GPU when the system was on. It didn't really seem to do it when it's off, probably just because of the, the pressure, the flow pressure with the pump running. Um, this system is running the Corsair V5 pump. So it seems like when the system's on, a little bit of pressure, 
definitely leaks. Now, I really don't like when things are put together like that, where you can sort of just touch it and things are leaking or things are coming apart, especially in a water-cooled system. Um, so I'm definitely going to pull this GPU out. I still have the EK water block. I may just slap that on. Um, and it kind of gives me a nice chance to do a nice redesign of this build. Um, I'm probably going to do hard tubing this time, probably maintaining that 3800X AMD Ryzen, no issue with the CPU, but I'm definitely gonna change the water block and use this for a different build, just because, I don't know, over time, I really hope it doesn't get worse or, or these water blocks could have other problems. Definitely an issue that Corsair has to look into. I know they're pretty new into the water cooling game. They've done AIOs and air coolers for many years, as well as their all fans and things of that nature. And I generally definitely like their products. They're definitely priced a little bit higher end in general. So it's a little bit disappointing that this happens on this particular Corsair water block. I really wanted it to be, you know, very high quality and last a long time but I'm definitely gonna take it apart. It's kind of unacceptable to have this type of leak coming from something like this. I mean, it's a 2080 Super in there. You know, there's an expensive power supply underneath. You really don't wanna risk something like this, not having the longevity and reliability that you expect in a water cooling system with expensive components. I mean, this wasn't a cheap GPU, but still they should have designed something where it doesn't leak just by touching it. It wasn't even really a huge amount of force, but definitely, other YouTubers have seen this already, and I've seen it on my own system here. It's definitely an issue and something that's going to have to be addressed. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you guys have used this GPU block, let me know down below. Let me know what you're going to be replacing it with, and I'll see you guys on the next video.